Okay, so first thing that we're gonna do in cleaning is we're gonna clean a latex brush. So latex, obviously we got one set up for the water, that's for your latex brushes, one set up for the paint thinner, that's your oil, which we'll go over that with you guys too as well. So I take my latex brush, I put it in the water, swirl it around. Now it's still, this brush hasn't been used too much today, but normally what ends up happening is paint starts to dry on these top edges up here. So that's why we have our wire brush. And we do that to start breaking up any dried out paint. Now keep in mind, all the paint is in the brush. So if the outside bristles look clean, doesn't mean that the actual paint has been cleaned out of the brush. Spin it around to get in here. Might take you a little bit more time than that with a brush that you've been using for the majority of the day. But you gotta get now the brush and the spinner all the way to the end. That's one of the most important things to get the brush all the way up. So sometimes these are stiff. This is actually a really good one, but you can stuff it right here in your gut and then push that in until you get to the top. Once you've done that, you do dip and spin. So dip and then watch the spinning, start slow, and then you can work a little faster. And use a little WD-40, that's okay. Then we'll spin, dip and spin. One thing you can do is carry a small bottle of WD-40 in your crew kit, and then you can spray it down the gunnel here to lubricate it, make it spin a little bit easier. There you go, out. And again, dip and spin. Now, what we're looking for is making sure that all the paint is out from inside the bristles. So in this case, I'll do one more dip and spin. You usually do with latex and water about four to five. Take a rag, clean up the brush, and do this as well. One of the most important things is making sure that you keep the case that your brush comes in. Do not rip it, do not throw it out, do not lose it. You want to put this brush, when it's clean at the end of the day, back inside of it so it keeps its shape and it keeps it nice and neat and keeps the brush clean. Now if I had been using this brush all day, I would have gotten paint on it. So sometimes I just take my rag, dip a little bit in the paint thinner, and use that to clean off my handle, making it nice and clean so it's easy to use and I'm not getting other products in here. And that includes the wood handle. You can use your paint thinner to clean that off. And again, a good test. Normally I do it on my bare arm, but well, in a COVID world, we can't really do that, can we? So put it in here. No paint is coming onto my sleeve. Therefore, we've cleaned out this brush pretty good. Now, we'll move on to getting rid of our oil-based primer. So, of course, we will be using a lot of oil-based primers, and I ask that all of you do not use latex-based primers on any bare wood interior exterior. You can use latex-based primers on drywall and a few other substrates, but on bare wood, oil-based is always gonna be the best. It penetrates very, very well, but unfortunately, it smells, it does have a quick dry time, which is nice. The Zinsser cover stain is one hour for reco, but we have to clean in paint thinner. So again, when I open my can, I clean off the lid. Every time I open a can, even if it's just to pour paint back in, I clean off the lid. Put this back. Now to clean off all the remaining product, or clean out the remaining product, and then to be able to reuse this can again, I wanna scoop it all out of here and back into my primer can. And I gotta watch for the excess paint that falls back from uh, the area where the lid goes in. So I use my brush to scoop out all the excess. The, the purpose of doing this is so the only thing left in here is just the paint around the walls and on the, the floor of the can. Not having big uh, clumps uh, or you know, anything other than just a millimeter uh, because it won't dry properly and then you won't be able to reuse this as a cut can. And for those of you that are vets, you know there are many days where a shortage of a cut can really puts your day uh, off to a rocky start. So it's always important to have lots of cut cans. Make sure to dry out your cans properly. So just to give you an example, that is a cleaned out cut can. 
and that'll be left out to dry now. Again, I clean out the edges of my can. So I put the lid back. And I'll put that in there. Again, when we do put these back on, guys, please use a mallet. Do not use the end of a six in one. Put a rag bag over it and use the mallet to hammer that down. We'll do it in a second. And again, when we sit here, it is one thing with the wire brush, it is important sometimes to have two of them. One that's gonna be for paint thinner and one for water. Just if you use it in a paint thinner and then before the paint thinner evaporates and dries off of the bristles, you go and use in the water, the leftover paint thinner will then sit around and float in the water. So traditionally, if I use in the paint thinner and then I need to go use it in the water after, I just take a rag quickly and just do this to it. Cleaning it off and drying it just to get the paint thinner off before I mix it in with the water, okay? Not the end of the world if you do. So paint thinner will break down the products a lot better, but it eats away at those nylon bristles. That's why we don't use paint thinner to clean out our latex brushes. It'll destroy our brushes. But oil-based brushes are of course uh, real hair. They're uh, not my hair. Uh, <laughs> hog hair or horse hair. Um, and they'll say uh, uh, natural bristles or something like that. Again, so that one had paint in it being dried around the top. It's not a sunny day and yet it still happens. So just keep that in mind, especially on a sunny day, how much you gotta keep a rag over it. So you would have seen at the beginning that when we had the, the brush in the can, there was a rag over the top. So it keeps it from drying. And again, cleaning out the brush, put it back in the spinner. Okay, back in, dip and spin. Paint thinner obviously does a better job than water, so you only need to dip and spin a couple times. To avoid your spinner from just doing this, like I said earlier, the Setsu WD-40. Spray it down there, it'll make a world of difference. This is a good spinner. Okay, and again, just taking a rag to help clean and dry it out. Off. There you go. Now, one of the main things too with your cleaning station should be separate from your crew kit. If you want to show them the crew kit there. So the cleaning station is separate. Uh, we want to make sure we got lots of space in case there's any splatter just to get onto the tarp. Um, we also want to make sure our lids are marked as well as the containers that they're in. So it says paint thin or it says water. Please make sure that we lock these lids on at night or during the day. We don't want any kid. We've had a rodent, I'm a friend to the squirrels and we had a squirrel unfortunately climb in here one night and he didn't make it. So uh, yeah, very sad. I like squirrels so let's not do that. So please make sure to lock the lids down on here. More importantly than the squirrel population of Metro Vancouver is the children population. So we also don't want them getting in any of this stuff either. So uh, please make sure just to lock them down. But yeah, that's about it. That's your cleaning. Again, you can also, uh, with uh, rollers, if you want to clean out rollers, what I would do with a color like this one, and you can show them the color that we're using, I would wrap that at the end of the day. And when the job is complete and I'm done with the roller, I use my six one, in this case, nine one, and scoop out all the paint and I throw away that roller. And that's not one that I'm gonna be able to like clean out that well, okay? And plus, since they cost, you know, three bucks and the amount of time I'd spend, probably not worth it. But if I used a white, so we are gonna be using a white on the ceiling, and if that roller is still in good condition when I'm done with it, then I will scoop out all the paint. I will stick the roller in the water and I will be doing this with it, okay? Helping get the paint, the water out, continually burying it in the water, doing this, burying it in the water, doing this, okay? In between the roller, I want to stick a, once I pull it out, I stick a rag through to clean out any of the water inside. And then I stick it over top of my spinner and I stick it in here and spin it. And the thing is, you saw what a brush can do for overspray. Imagine what a 20 mil roller is going to do sitting on this. 
So traditionally I have a drop sheet or a rag or something wrapped around while I'm spinning to catch any of the excess overspray. But again, I only clean uh, rollers that are in good shape when I'm done that were in very, very light color. So anything white or off white and stuff like that. Anything with darker color, you're not gonna be able to clean that well in the amount of time it'll take you to do it. It's not worth it. So just make sure that at the end of the day, we do wrap them up properly to be able to reuse them for the entire course of the job. Okay? Okay. Cool.